Hi, this is Mark Payne. Uh, I'm back with the second part of uh, looking at the 13-inch uh, Apple MacBook Pro uh, on M1 Apple Silicon. In this session, we're going to be looking at Logic Pro Audio, uh, running a bunch of plug plugins that aren't supposed to be supported on Big Sur. Okay, so uh, this is just an overview of how I've set up my um, uh, 15 inch um, uh, silicon MacBook. Historically I've I've got a Thunderbolt display which normally um, is used with my uh, iMac Pro in the studio but um, what I've done this time is I've just I've just simply taken the um, the output of Thunderbolt 3 and then that goes into the um, Thunderbolt display and in there at the back there it's hosting the USB the, the Thunderbolt continues out to my kind of backup drive and also my um, uh, SSD. Although for these tests, everything's on the internal drive. The display just works straight out of the box. So I've had absolutely no problems with that whatsoever. Also my iLock uh, USB worked out of the box. I run some cheap and cheerful uh, Tannoy uh, reveal monitors. Your, your mileage might vary, but um, for me, it's much more in important that you spend money on acoustic treatment in your studio than you do spend money on posh monitors. Effectively, I know what the uh, the Tannoy reveal sound like. As always with speaker systems, what I'm looking for is beautiful acoustics. So anyway, uh, that just is an overview of the hardware setup. Let me just uh, say that I've had a frustrating couple of days, but I, I think I've really made some progress. And remember, I'm using Logic Pro here in a scenario where I'm using a bunch of unsupported plugins just to see what would happen. All of these plugins, let me say, are not translated yet. So they, they, they don't have native Apple code. They're running in uh, Intel code. And so Rosetta 2 is required to translate. Logic Pro is already translated. It's, it, it, it comes out of the box as a native uh, program for the M1 chip. This is Activity Monitor. You can clearly see things that are uh, running as native Apple Silicon code um, uh, for the M1. And then you can see here console one, which is one of my plugins, is um, that's running uh, Intel version. So Rosetta 2 is making the conversion. It just so happens that um, I've, I've downloaded a bunch of Microsoft stuff on here. So I, you know, I use Microsoft Office and I bring the apps down. And for, for example, Outlook, which used to be quite a, a hungry uh, uh, processing, now it's, it's native. So Microsoft have already um, uh, redeveloped that code and, and compiled it for Apple. And that's running really, really, really eff efficiently. But then you'll notice here that uh, OneDrive, um, uh, which I also use, is, is, um, is, is running Intel. So they've, they've done Outlook, but they've not done OneDrive. When I first started to run um, logic and put these um, plugins in, it would run, but it was really, really unstable. I would get um, uh, plugin errors, crashes, quits. Sometimes a uh, logic sessions would, would, would start and fall over. And I thought, oh, I've made a mistake here. This is going to be a nightmare. Now, uh, Matt from Liquid so Sonics uh, really uh, helped me here because he said, look, Mark, what you want to do is don't, don't run logic in native mode, run it Rosetta, because then everything is being translated. Whereas if we move logic and we purposefully run it in its degraded mode, i.e. run it in uh, and have it run uh, in uh, emulated mode as well under Rosetta 2, then that that would be maybe a better way to go. And, and in actual fact, it, it totally transforms the machine. The, the plugins have been completely stable and it's been like running logic uh, as as before, and I just wanted to show you, you know, how you set that up. Here I, I am uh, with um, looking in applications, and uh, if you do a, an info on the Logic program, you'll notice that I can I can click the the box that says open using Rosetta. My understanding is that every program that is is effectively compiled for M1 it gets compiled twice. You end up with a version of it which is for M1 and a version of it which is Intel to be interpreted by Rosetta 2. So um, by ticking that box, you're going to force the Intel version to run. If we find Logic Pro in my activity monitor, uh, we are running the Intel version of it. So 
Uh, that's cool. So the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So I, I, I'm sorry I'm not maybe as beautiful as some of the people that do these things, but I'm really trying to show you the real thing. So what I need to explain is not only am I running Logic here with all my plugins native, but I'm also uh, playing you a, a synchronized uh, video clip of the gig embedded into Logic. And also, I'm, of course, I'm running QuickTime to, to uh, capture the screen. So there's a lot going on on this, this uh, MacBook Pro. One of the guys I work with, a guy called Martin Gordon, he's got a, a project called Greenlight. And we, we, this year we, we did a streaming, uh, a gig, you know, during lockdown and COVID. And the guys got together and we, we, we streamed a little show for, for, for uh, fans of... Uh, Martin's band and also my Genesis Visible Touch band. Oh, I'm going to put me me headphones on so I can hear what you hear. Hey brother, can you hear me calling to you? I sure could use. Okay, so we're we're underway now, and you can see my utilization, my CPU utilization across the cores, is um you know is being sustained and uh, uh, there is no way I could have run this session at 96k with all these plugins on, 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 a, uh, on an Intel 13 inch MacBook Pro. It just wouldn't have happened. Yeah, that's the one. Come on, let's go. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is um, I'm running, I use um, um, uh, Fab filter gates. I, I love the uh, the the pro the pro gates, the pro G from Fab filter. That goes over all my drum kit. And here I'm just showing you the display of the uh, of the uh, the gates on the toms, for example. And there's you know there's quite a lot of processing needed to to update these displays. And uh, remember, all of this is being run emulated in Rosetta 2. Uh, just to give things a hard time, I'm, I'm running uh, a couple of instances of uh, H reverb from Waves. Um, th that's quite a hungry reverb processor. I'm also running my favorite, which is um, uh, there are two or three instances of Seventh Heaven uh, 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 reverb. Uh, and I'm running a number of the, um, uh, the Manny uh, delays. That's, that's all being done by Waves and some CLA guitars. Uh, uh, so these are all channel inserts. I'll show you some of the group and the mastering inserts being used in a second. So let's just have a look at that. So that's cool. And uh, let, let me now show you some of the mastering plugins that I'm using within this session. Um, so this is more on the um, whoop, uh, probably a number of screen set number five. So um, this is on the um, on that side, uh, and uh, what I run what I run here is um, I mix down some subgroups, and each subgroup has got uh, SSL uh, bus compressors on 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 there, and then the final mastering stage is uh, L3 maximizer, multi maximizer. Uh, and I also run, um, uh, just looking at loudness metering and um, uh, spatial, uh, spatial metering and also the, uh, uh, the stereo uh, uh, Doro meter, which I really like as well. So uh, all of that is happening native on this machine while it's playing video and while it's recording what I'm doing, which I would suggest is pretty damn impressive. And, the performance meter, which I'll just highlight again here, is uh, still within bounds, and this is only going to get better. Now, that's, uh, I would say, I'm really happy with that. I'm surprised that it's working as well, it, well as it is. Now, you can see the, hit, the video has just stopped, uh, but again, I don't normally do that anyway, and, it, and just listening, you know, you've been listening, there's been no, there's been no audio interrupts. Um, while we've been doing this, um, uh, so I'm 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 really happy with that. Now, one thing that doesn't quite work for me in this Logic environment is you're probably aware that you know I use uh, Console One, and um, uh, you know it's plugged into the USB at the moment, and and Console One is the plugin is working. I mean, 
the 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 DSP of the plugin is working. You're hearing it. It's on every channel of um, of the machine because it's the way I do EQ. I don't touch any logic uh, EQ or 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 I don't touch any logic in general. I don't touch any logic uh, gating or compression. It's all done within Soft Tubes Console One environment. But the um, uh, the plugin is working fine, but let me just show you. You can bring up the um, uh, a console one's um, uh, software user interface, and that will all work. Well, I mean, it would be a horrible thing to do. I mean, part of the point of console one is I love it for the interface, but the the, the interface just isn't working. So there's something wrong in the USB connection. Uh, some of some of the buttons work in that I can bring I can bring the display on and off by. Uh, hitting by hitting the uh, uh, the button, and I can select tracks as well. So we'll bring the dis you can see I'm navigating through the tracks, but the actual compressor gate and and EQ knobs aren't aren't working. So that's something SoftTube will obviously need to address. And it's not really fair on SoftTube, is it? Because they've clearly said that uh, Big Sur and Apple Silicon is not supported yet. If you look at my benchmarks between um, running M1 uh, in terms of a, um, a native performance and a Rosetta 2 performance, for example, Cinebench and uh, Geekbench, then you could argue that there's going to be a 20 to 30% improvement here uh, once things move over to the, uh, the native Apple uh, M1 environment. Now, I think it will actually be much better than that because not only will it run faster, but we won't be having to translate backwards and forwards. I think the machine is gonna have phenomenal um, uh, potential and um, uh, that I'm doing things with a small format machine that, that I would not be able to do other than with my Studio iMac. Okay, so that's, that's the story so far. Of course, I've got much more to test in, in the area of pro audio. Uh, which I'll come back to, but it takes me so long to do do to to actually make the stuff work, and then and another incredible amount of time to explain it and and come up with a demonstration that's meaningful for for people. But I hope this has been useful to you, and um, I look forward to speaking to you in the next session. All right, this has been Mark Payne from MP Audio, and uh, 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 good luck with your uh, with your Apple Silicon. <laughs>